The 2021 Planning Institute of Australia National Awards for Planning Excellence are proudly supported by Principal Sponsor, City of Adelaide Ahuri Haynes Charlie Holding Redlick Planned Cover Queensland Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning Urbis Victorian Planning Authority and ACOM Welcome to the PIA 2021 National Awards for Planning Excellence. I'm Ingrid Cumming and I'll be your MC for the Planning Festival this week and it's my pleasure to be your host this evening. Tonight is an occasion to celebrate with the entire planning profession and I would like to welcome everyone who has joined us. I hope you enjoy the night with your colleagues, friends and family around Australia. First, I acknowledge that I'm hosting this event from the lands of the Ngunnawal people. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of various lands on which you have joined us from today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this event. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and to the emerging leaders and to celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters. Peer National Awards for Planning Excellence showcase leading practice and achievement in planning and the planning profession across a range of planning disciplines and sectors. Leadership in planning, particularly in the face of adversity, is acknowledged and applauded. In all, these awards are a chance to celebrate, recognise and reward outstanding planning and planners. I hope that you are taking this opportunity to celebrate at this difficult and uncertain time brings each of you moment of joy, connection with your colleagues and the profession. Now I'd like to invite Darren Crombie, National President of Planning Institute of Australia, to say a few words. Thanks very much, Ingrid. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 PIA National Awards for Planning Excellence. My name's Darren Crombie, and I'm the President of the Planning Institute of Australia. Each year, the National Awards for Planning Excellence provide us with an opportunity to celebrate the achievements of our profession and to showcase the incredible projects all over this country. Projects that aim to improve communities and improve the lives of the people who live in those communities. I think it's important to recognise how fortunate we are to be able to celebrate an occasion like this, even though we can't do it in person. Being able to have an event like this delivered online is testament to PIA's ability to adapt and to change the way it's delivered its services during this challenging time in our history. The 2021 Planning Festival is taking place over the next four days, and its core content is being delivered entirely online. The festival is shaping up to be an exceptional event, featuring a host of domestic and international speakers. I'm really excited to see hundreds of planners participating in the festival and taking the opportunity to learn online. Importantly, there's also the opportunity for people to meet up in person at one of the many sideshow events being held around the country. In continuing with tonight's theme of celebration, this year marks a very special occasion for the Institute. In August, it'll be 70 years since a group of pioneering planners first got together to form what we now know as the Planning Institute of Australia. I hope that you'll join with me later in the year in celebrating that milestone. Lastly, I'd like to wish everybody who's a nominee in tonight's awards the very best of luck. Back to you, Ingrid. Thank you, Darren. I would like to thank all of our category sponsors tonight 
and give a special thanks to the National Awards for Planning Excellence Principal Sponsor, the City of Adelaide. And we have a short message from the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Sandy Vershaw. Thank you, Ingrid. Hello, I'm Sandy Vershaw, Lord Mayor of Adelaide. It is a shame you're unable to join us in person in Adelaide this year. However, I welcome the opportunity to join you virtually for the Planning Institute's first virtual National Planning Congress. And we're proud to be the principal sponsor of this year's National Awards for Planning Excellence. From the very beginning, Adelaide has been a city designed with the well-being of its people front of mind. Reflecting Colonel William Light's genius of place and plan, the city has a grid-like pattern of wide streets and terraces and is hugged by 760 hectares of parklands. A city in a park, enabling people to live well and in balance with nature and the built form. Adelaide is consistently recognised as one of the most livable cities in the world, a place of opportunity with accessibility to nature and connection to community. It's a progressive city, home to state-defining and world-changing ideas and projects, where growth comes with a sustainable mindset and ideas are encouraged and nurtured. If you are in Adelaide, I'd encourage you to get out and explore our amazing city and surrounds. And if you're joining us virtually, please visit us at our virtual booth. I do hope you enjoy the Planning Institute of Australia's planning awards and congress and get the most out of the festival to plan the future of our cities in a challenging century. Thank you. I think people often underestimate how wonderful Adelaide can be. The blending that this city has of its uh, heritage and the contemporaneous of it its scale, its humanity and its decency, its mobility, the ease with which it's possible to connect with other people. It's at a scale that is human and friendly and manageable and we have so many beautiful open spaces that we can enjoy. If you look at it, it's a grid, it's easy to get around. Um, I think it was designed really well in terms of um, accessibility to everything. I've never been in a city where I know where South, North, West and East are so clearly. I love the fact that I can walk everywhere. Uh, it's really good for your wellbeing to be able to just decompress at the end of the day walking home. For me, every single thing I've wanted to achieve family-wise and career-wise has been able to be done right here in Adelaide. Every week, a lot of growth, children. but in a very sustainable way. So I think it's yeah. Adelaide yeah. Hospital, yeah. we've got with the... new technologies. Sandy. We have 12 award categories ahead of us, featuring 59 nominees, each of whom has come through the state and territory awards for consideration by the National Judging Panel. In bestowing a national award, the judges recognise outstanding planning outcomes as well as achievements of individual planners, particularly those who have provided leadership in the face of adversity. And now, to set the scene and give us some insights into this year's deliberations, it's my pleasure to introduce Steve O'Connor, National Judge Convener. Thank you, Ingrid. I was fortunate to have a team of judges who carefully reviewed all the nominations and provided considered and astute feedback. Peter would like to acknowledge the hard work and commitment of all the judges. Our national judges are all volunteers and dedicate many hours to the judging process, which is never an easy task. 2021, we considered 59 outstanding entries across 12 award categories. I would like to take this opportunity to extend a vote of thanks to all those involved in preparing and submitting nominations last year, which as we know, was a year of enormous uncertainty and massive disruption thanks to the COVID-19 global pandemic. These nominations demonstrate that despite the many difficulties experienced in 2020, our profession continues to produce outstanding outcomes to serve the current and future needs of the many and varied communities that make up this nation. I would like to acknowledge the peer staff and the respective awards teams in each of the divisions, 
all of whom play a crucial role in getting these nominations to the National Award Arena. All the award winners and those who receive commendations can feel justifiably proud of their achievement. To be recognised by your peers as the best of the best is indeed a high accolade. To those who did not receive an award, you can rest in the knowledge that you're already an award winner in your respective state and territory divisions. Back to you, Ingrid. Thanks, Steve. The first announcement is the National President's Award, and I'd like to hand over to Darren Crombie once again to announce the recipient. Thanks, Ingrid. And now it is my absolute pleasure to announce the winner of the President's Award. This year, we have two joint winners. And the first joint winner is Connected Hobart, Smart City Framework and Action Plan by the City of Hobart. This place-based program for Smart Cities Transformation aims to make Hobart the most economically, environmentally and socially connected capital city community in Australia by 2030. It combines human ingenuity with technological innovation to enrich the quality of life for everybody living, visiting or working in Hobart. And it is an exemplar for taking planning policy and strategy into practice. Congratulations to the City of Hobart. I just want to say a big thank you to Pia. Uh, what an amazing outcome and certainly not one we had in mind at the start of this journey. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to all of the employees across the City of Hobart who participated in the project, um, the people on the team implementing all the actions in the Connected Hobart Smart City Action Plan, um, the elected members for supporting the project throughout, um, and of course all the community members um, who put in all of their values and hopes and fears about the future of City of Hobart to help us make um, an amazing strategy. Thank you. And the second joint winner for the 2021 President's Award is the City of Palmerston Community Plan by the City of Palmerston and Democracy Co. Demonstrating a unique understanding and acknowledgement of the needs and aspirations of a community, the plan rebuilds community trust, shares the challenges and enables key stakeholders to participate. In allowing the community to take ownership of the plan, Council has demonstrated a real commitment to the community, to the consultative process and to delivering tangible results. My personal congratulations to the City of Palmerston and Democracy Co. Thank you, Planning Institute of Australia. City of Palmerston is proud to receive this award. We stepped outside of our usual approach to community planning and empowered and entrusted a group of community members to write the plan with guidance from Democracy Co and Council staff. A plan that the people own and that we all embrace. Thank you to all those involved in the preparation of the plan, including members of the Palmerston People's Forum, our young people, representatives of Larrakia Nation and other community stakeholders. Happy 70th anniversary, Pia. Thanks for those comments, Darren, and congratulations to the joint recipients of the President's Award. Now, before we move on to the next announcement, some quick housekeeping. For all the winners tonight, please remember to stay to the end. We have a photo call after the event, just like we would traditionally do in our face-to-face -face presentations. Instead of coming up on stage, we will all meet in the Winners' Lounge. There will be a link in the Peer website, so please join in for a Winners' Group photo and interviewing, which we will do after the event. And moving on to the Cutting Edge Research and Teaching Award, supported by Ahuri. This award recognises achievement in planning scholarship, research or teaching. Let's check out the nominees. The Rapid Analytics Interactive Scenario Explorer, RAISE Toolkit, by City Futures Research Centre, UNSW QUT Design Lab, OmniLink and Frontier SI. 
children's everyday mobilities and low carbon living by Julia Gilbert, PhD Research Project. And Geelong's Changing Landscape, Ecology, Development and Conservation 2019 by Professor David S. Jones and Associate Professor Dr. Philip Roos. Three great projects and the award for cutting edge research and teaching goes to the Rapid Analytics Interactive Scenario Explorer Raise Toolkit by City Futures Research Centre, UNSW, QUT, Design Lab, OmniLink and Frontier SI. The RAISE Toolkit generates rapid estimates so that several potential infrastructure projects can be tested in real time in an intuitive 3D map interface. With access to unprecedented big data, it can help realise better infrastructure outcomes for Sydney and its residents. With the potential to be implemented more widely, it can help maximise value from current and future transformational projects across Australian cities. Congratulations to the team. We are very delighted to be the recipient of this peer award for cutting edge research and teaching. So the team comprising of City Futures Research Centre at UNSW QT Design Lab, OmniLink and Frontier SI. Very pleased to be working on this Rapid Analytics Interactive Scenario Explorer Toolkit. The toolkit has been deployed and tested both in Sydney and in Brisbane and can calculate value uplift around transformational infrastructure, train stations and calculate what that value might be for surrounding properties. We're very delighted to be the recipient of this award. Thank you, Pierre. I'm Helen Dyer, Managing Director of Homsar. Great big shout out, happy 70th PM. Congratulations again to the team, and thanks for those comments, Professor Chris Pettit. The next category to be presented is From Plan to Place. This recognises the implementation of a plan into a successful place and is sponsored by Haim Sharley. And to introduce the nominees in this category, Chris Mayer from Haim Sharley. Thanks Ingrid. Haim Sharley is very proud to be sponsoring the Plan to Place Award. And now we just need to know who the nominees are. And of course, we want to wish them all the very best of luck. Thank you. Campbell S5 by Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects, Jane Irwin Landscape Architecture, JILA, and ACT Suburban Land Agency. Howard Smith Wharves by Brisbane City Council and HSW nominees. And Brockman Street Food and Beverage Precinct by Shire of Manjimup. Thanks, Chris. Now for the announcements. The judges have awarded two joint winners in this category. The first award for From Plan to Place goes to Campbell S5 by Hill Thallus Architecture and Urban Projects, Jane Irwin Landscape Architecture and ACT Suburban Land Agency. Outstanding master planning has delivered a high quality urban environment, well planned streets and an award-winning public green space, Hassett Park, accessible to residents of the surrounding areas. The judges were extremely impressed with this exemplar of urban infield development, in particular, its integration into the existing built form and natural setting, and it's an exceptional design honouring Griffin's legacy. Congratulations to the team. Thank you so much to Pia for this award for our Campbell Section 5 project, which has been an incredible collaboration between ourselves as architects and urban designers and Jane Irwin, landscape architect, and Cardinal, the engineers who led the project. 
Uh, it really sets a new benchmark in terms of public space, in terms of the environmental performance, daylighting, water, um, building a dense place in the centre of the city, respecting the avenues, Anzac, uh, obviously Anzac Parade and Constitution Avenue, two of these critical Griffin avenues in Canberra. So it's really delivering on best practice in terms of city making. Thank you, Pia. Thanks for those comments, Philip, and congratulations once again. And the second award from Plan to Place goes to Howard Smith Wharves by Brisbane City Council and HSW nominees. A valuable contribution to Brisbane now and in the future, this site transformation is the result of nearly two decades of planning. Howard Smith Wharves is an exemplary development that embodies the subtropical and outdoor lifestyle values of Queensland's capital and ongoing patronage economic successes and contribution to Brisbane's vibrant river culture deserve national recognition. Congratulations, Brisbane City Council and HSW nominees. I'm Adrian Schrinner, Lord Mayor of Brisbane. I'm thrilled to be able to accept the Planning Institute of Australia's National Award for Planning Excellence on behalf of Brisbane City Council. This award recognises the many long years of hard work planning and dedication that went into creating the world-class Howard Smith Wharves precinct. We've come such a long way since I launched the Howard Smith Wharves revitalisation project in 2013 with Councillor Vicky Howard. Council's vision was to see this unused, derelict and inaccessible pocket of inner city land transformed into one of the city's most popular destinations. Now it's thriving and constantly humming with people enjoying Brisbane's laid back river lifestyle. It's also supporting hundreds of jobs and pumping millions of dollars back into Brisbane's economy. This transformation wasn't without its challenges and also its opponents. And I particularly want to thank all of the hardworking people, both within council and also in the private sector, who helped make this vision a reality. Of course, it wouldn't have been possible to be the success it is today without the major investment and expertise of the Howard Smith Wharves Consortium. So on behalf of Brisbane City Council, Thank you for recognising these efforts and presenting the National Award for Planning Excellence to Brisbane City Council. Congratulations, Pia, on all your achievements over the last 70 years. You've been a fantastic support for the planning profession. Let's celebrate. Thanks, Adrian, a great project. The next category is the Hard Won Victory, which recognises a planning initiative, effort or leadership that has led to positive planning outcomes in the face of difficult or trying circumstances. This category is proudly sponsored by Planned Cover. Now let's take a look at the nominees for the Hard Won Victory. Rural Land Strategy by Tweed Shire Council. Uramina Oaks Residential Living by Ian Brashaw Urban Plan, Brian Blakeman Surveys, Low Ecological Services, and Donald Field Consultants. Isaac Regional Planning Scheme and Coastal Planning Provisions by Isaac Regional Council, Ethos Urban, and Cardno. Transformation and Uplift of Churchill Road Precinct by City of Prospect. Open for Business, Planning Response to COVID-19 by Planning Group, Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning. And Collie Federation Facade Restoration by Shire of Collie, Andrew Dover, Robert Quinn and Scott Gear. A great field of entrance across the country. Now for the announcements. The judges have awarded one commendation and one award for this category. The commendation goes to Isaac Regional Planning Scheme and Coastal Planning Provisions by Isaac Regional Council, Ethos Urban and Cardno. And the award for hard won victory goes to Rural Land Strategy by Tweed Shire Council. Adopted in May 2020, after almost seven years of development, the Rural Land Strategy overcame a range of technical, social and political challenges as well as barriers including divergent community views, 
requiring elected councils to take a hands-on approach. The judges commended the balanced and extended approach taken by the council to establish a strategy that considers a range of attitudes and expectations. Congratulations, Tweed Shire Council. We would like to thank Pia for the opportunity to be recognised for the key completion and adoption of the Tweed Rural Land Strategy. The strategy represents the culmination of an extensive uh, investigation and community consultation and has brought to light the very diverse nature of rural Tweed and the people and their opinions and has sought to present a balanced approach to the future use of rural land in the Tweed. Hello, this is Vicky Lummer here from the City of South Perth and also Pia WA President. Happy 70th, Pia. And now, to Best Planning Ideas, Small Project, which recognises outstanding planning ideas for a project that is limited to a site, local place or neighbourhood. This category is sponsored by Holding Redlick. And now, let's take a look at the seven nominees for the Best Planning Ideas Small Project. Chill Out Hubs, Smart Social Spaces, Creating Connected Green Places by UNSW Sydney, Street Furniture Australia, Georges River Council and University of Sydney. Master Plan 320, Arnhem Highway, Humpty Doo, Northern Territory by Tropics Consultancy Group. Latrobe and Given Terraces, Place Strategy and Activation Toolkit by Place Design Group and Brisbane Economic Development Agency. Port Lincoln Precinct's Master Plan, including the implementation of the Tuna Polar Statue by City of Port Lincoln, Jensen Plus, Brecknock Consulting, InfraPlan and Ken Martin. Treasury Complex and Public Buildings, Hobart CMP, by Purcell and ERA Planning. Mount Street Area Master Plan, by City of Stonington, Tract Consultants and Blast Urban. And Equine Management Interactive Module, by Shire of Serpentine, Jarradale. Now for the announcements, the judges have awarded one commendation and one award for this category. The commendation goes to Latrobe and Given Terrace's Place Strategy and Activation Toolkit by Place Design Group and Brisbane Economic Development Agency. And the award for Best Planning Ideas Small Project goes to Chill Out Hubs, Smart Social Spaces Creating Connected Green Places by UNSW Sydney, Street Furniture Australia, Georges River Council and University of Sydney. This highly engaging project was a collaboration between industry, academia and local government that sought a practical, functional and sustainable translation of smart cities concepts. Chill Out Hubs, innovative, open air community spaces, responds to environmental features, are human centred and adaptable to the local community needs and expectations. The judges were impressed with the approach which went beyond theory to focus on deliverability and usability. Congratulations to the team. On behalf of the Smart Social Spaces team, many thanks to the Planning Institute of Australia for recognising the national significance of this local project. The project was co-created through a unique collaboration. The hubs were designed to offer shade for relief from increasing urban heat, comfortable seating and space for social interaction, and a beautiful structure that animates the streetscape, providing supportive, smart technology features for its citizens. Thank you. Happy 70th, Pia. Thanks for all you do to support young planners around Australia. Here's to the next 70. Woohoo! Thanks, Christine, and congratulations once again. The next category is Best Planning Ideas, Large Project, and recognises outstanding planning ideas for a project that has town or city, regional, statewide, national or cross-jurisdictional benefit. This category is sponsored by ACOM. 
Now let's take a look at the nominees. Parks Special Activation Precinct Master Plan by New South Wales Department of Planning, Industry and Environment Special Activation Precincts Team. Japaru Town Plan 2019 by NT Department of Infrastructure, Planning and Logistics and Parks Australia. Cape, Torres and Gulf Economic Opportunities Plan by Arab Australia and Torres Cape Indigenous Council Alliance, TCICA Inc. The Wilkinson's Point Plan by Irene Inc. Planning and Urban Design, Fender Cats Ladies Architects and Oculus, Landscape Architecture and Urban Design. And Transport Strategy 2030 by City of Melbourne. In this category, the judges have awarded one commendation and one award. The commendation goes to Cape, Tours and Gulf Economic Opportunities Plan by Arup Australia and the Tours Cape Indigenous Council Alliance. And the award for Best Planning Ideas Large Project goes to Transport Strategy 2030 by City of Melbourne. This visionary, transformative and evidence-based strategy addresses the significant and growing transport challenges being faced by the city. The approach to the public engagement process, particularly the innovative use of traditional and social media, can be applied in the context of planning projects. The judges applaud this project as a model that can be used by cities across Australia as they grapple with the growing challenges of transport and planning. Congratulations, City of Melbourne. Well, we are absolutely delighted to have won this award. We'd love to thank PIA, uh, the recognition by PIA and our peers in the industry means uh, a huge amount to us. It's been a fantastic project. We really consulted very widely with the community which established our transport strategy as being a document with a really significant profile and it's given us a springboard to be able to deliver a whole lot of things like new bike lanes, shared zones and little streets and a whole lot of other projects. So we are just, we're delighted with the project and winning the award is just um, a little bit of extra recognition for a fantastic team effort. Thanks. Happy 70th birthday, Pia. Thanks, Richard. The next category is Improving Planning Processes and Practices. This award recognises the achievements of translating good planning policy into improved processes and practices in the workplace and also on the ground. This category is sponsored by the Queensland Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning. Now let's take a look at the nominees for Improving Planning Processes and Practices. Inhabit Place Tool by Inhabit Place. Waverley Architectural Mapping Project by Waverley Council. Reforming the NT's Planning System by NT Department of Infrastructure, Planning and Logistics. Suburban Residential Character Assessment by City of Prospect, Wax Design and Grieve Gillette Anderson. Connected Hobart Smart City Framework and Action Plan by City of Hobart. Design Guidance Document Stations and Precincts by Level Crossing Removal Project. And Small Business Friendly Approvals Project by City of Stirling. And the judges have bestowed one award in this category, which goes to Inhabit Place Tool by Inhabit Place. The judges consider this locally developed placemaking tool to be the standout winner in this category. A view supported by its use nationally and internationally. The tool reports real world observations and advocates for improved urban design outcomes by providing an intimate understanding of how a public space is being used. The judges were also extremely impressed by the simplicity of the tool which can be utilised by both experts and laypersons alike. Congratulations, Inhabit Place. 
We couldn't be more delighted to have this national recognition by our peers of the work we're doing here at Inhabit Place. We're a young company founded in 2018 and we're working hard to create the best platform we can to make an impact nationally and internationally on public spaces. This recognition reinforces the confidence in what we are doing and affirms to the city making community that monitoring public space is an important part of the city making process. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm Doug Les, the Executive Director of Planning with the Northern Territory Government, and I'd like to say congratulations and thanks to Pia for looking after the interests of planners across Australia for the last 70 years. Thanks, Abilia, and congratulations to the team once again. Moving on to the public engagement and community planning. This category recognises initiatives in best practice public engagement that achieve an outstanding and innovative contribution to social planning, processes and outcomes. This category is supported by the National Awards for Planning Excellence Principal Sponsor, City of Adelaide. And I would like to hand over to the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Sandy Vachour, to introduce the nominees in this category. At the City of Adelaide, our community is paramount and engaging meaningfully with our community is something we value and try our best to adapt to ensure best practice. That's why it's a great honour for the City of Adelaide to be the sponsor of our next award category, the Public Engagement and Community Planning Award. Good luck, everyone. Hague Park Experiments 2019 by City Renewal Authority, University of Canberra, Tate Network, Ainsley and Gorman Arts Centres and Dionysus. Kingscliff Locality Plan and Development Control Plan by Tweed Shire Council. City of Palmerston Community Plan by City of Palmerston and Democracy Co. Sunshine Coast Community Strategy Building a Stronger Community Together by Sunshine Coast Council. Church and John Street Improvement Plan Engagement Program by GHD. All Abilities Park Ross Reserve Noble Park by City of Greater Dandenong, Ethos Urban and Land Design Partnership. And Future White Sands Community Engagement by Creating Communities and Woolworths Group. Thanks Sandy and a great range of projects across the country. The judges have awarded one commendation and one award for this category. The commendation goes to Sunshine Coast Community Strategy, Building a Stronger Community Together by Sunshine Coast Council. And the award for public engagement and community planning goes to Hague Park Experiments 2019 by City Renewal Authority, University of Canberra, Tate Network, Ainsley and Gorman Art Centres and Dionysus. The judges were impressed with the outstanding, authentic approach to placemaking and the attention to detail of the consultation process, which led to a measurable improvement in the use of the city park by local and citywide residents. This project was an extensive undertaking by a consortium which was led by the City Renewal Authority and University of Canberra. The result is an exemplar in public engagement and community planning. Congratulations to the City Renewal Authority, University of Canberra, Tate Network, Ainsley and Gorman Art Centres and Dionysus. Thank you, Pia, for this wonderful acknowledgement in the category of public engagement and community planning. Hague Park is a significant and important piece of open space within the City of Canberra. Through our experiments undertaken throughout 2019, there was 26 activations, installations and events that have successfully changed the perception of the park from being unsafe and underutilised into a place that's enjoyed by the community and the city and visitors. The, the community is utilising this space with markets on Sunday mornings. It's informed our briefs for new important projects such as the adaptive reuse 
of a depot building into a community centre and also there's paths and lighting throughout the park for more connectivity and safety. So again, thank you very much. It's such an important project for the, the city that's changed an urban forest into an urban parkland and it's based on the Ceres philosophy of people first and community led design and planning. Thank you so much. Happy 70th anniversary, Pia. Thank you, Dennis. The next awards category is Great Place, which perhaps unsurprisingly recognises a great place, street or neighbourhood. This award is sponsored by Urbis. And to introduce the nominees, I'd like to hand over to Rachel Trigg from Urbis. Thank you, Ingrid. Urbis is proud to be sponsoring the Great Place Award. As you can see from the image behind me, during COVID I've been particularly reminded of the importance of Great Places to the health and wellbeing of our local communities. I salute all of today's nominees and wish you all the very best of luck. Darling Square by Aspect Studios with Kengo Kuma and Associates and Lend Lease. U City by Jensen Plus and Uniting Communities. Nature Play at Royal Park by City of Melbourne and Victorian Department of Health and Human Services. And Ingle Nooks by Inglewood on Beaufort Incorporated. Thanks, Rachel. The judges have awarded two commendations and one award for this category. The first commendation goes to Darling Square by Aspect Studios with Kengo Kumar and Associates and Lendlease. The second commendation goes to U City, Jensen Plus and Uniting Communities. And the national award for Great Place goes to Ingle Nooks by Inglewood on Beaufort. Conceived, funded, designed and delivered by locals, Ingle Nooks has empowered the local community, created new energy for events in the area and supported local businesses. The project has transformed road widening setbacks and created outdoor living rooms for a suburb that is reinvigorating its identity with events and community organisations. A truly great place, it shows that small projects can have very big impacts. Congratulations Inglewood on Beaufort Incorporated. Wow, it's fantastic that we've um, been acknowledged for this award. Um, yeah, we were blown away getting the award for the WA chapter and to get this one, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And we gratefully receive it on behalf of um, all the community in Inglewood. Um, they were you know, genuinely involved in it the whole way through. So we would like to thank Pia. Um, we'd love the fact that we got another award and um, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a real vote for confidence in community grass-led uh, projects like this. So, um, yeah, we're really excited about it. Hey everyone, this is James McLean from the Municipal Association of Victoria congratulating PIA on an amazing 70th anniversary. Thank you, Ben and Damien. And now to the category of Outstanding Student Project, which recognises outstanding planning work by a tertiary student. This category is sponsored by Victorian Planning Authority. And I would like to hand over to Stuart Mosley from the Victorian Planning Authority to introduce the nominees in this category. Hi, I'm Stuart Mosley from the Victorian Planning Authority. And it's with great pleasure that the VPA sponsors the category of Outstanding Student Project in this year's National Peer Awards. Student planners are the future of our profession and the BPA takes every opportunity to support their development. Our congratulations to all of the finalists who've been recognised for their outstanding work nationally. A post-colonial reframing of Metropolitan Strategic Planning in Redfern by Sebastian Aguilar. Sustainable Indigenous Livelihoods Conceptual Framework by Jesse Marnock, James Cook University. 
developing water-sensitive cities, community perceptions of WSUD rain gardens in Richmond, Adelaide, by Kelsey Featherstone Hoare. From activism to collaborative city making. Parking Day as a case study in tactical urbanism by Mary McNeil. And Rewilding Industrial Land by Giselle Osborne, Monash University. Thanks, Stuart. And the judges have awarded one commendation and one award for this category. The commendation goes to Sustainable Indigenous Livelihoods Conceptual Framework by Jesse Marnock from James Cook University. And the award for Outstanding Student Project goes to Rewilding Industrial Land by Giselle Osborne from Monash University. This is an excellent project that is highly relevant to the planning and management of industrial precincts and biodiversity corridors. It challenges the existing Victorian framework for biodiversity planning, which uses offsets to mitigate the effects of urbanisation on ecosystems, investing in conservation land outside the urban growth boundary. Offering an alternative path forward for biodiversity planning, it outlines a vision to conserve and rewild remnant patches of native vegetation on both public and private employment land, incorporating them within the Open Space Network. Congratulations, Giselle Osborne. Uh, wow, thank you so much for the acknowledgement, Pia. Uh, I'm really grateful for this. Um, for me, this project has sparked an interest in biodiversity planning that continues today. Um, last year was obviously a really hard year um, being uh, locked down here in Melbourne, um, but it was great to be able to spend time working on this project and I'm really grateful to be able to continue studying and um, now <laughs> being out of lockdown. And, yeah, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Monash University and thank you to, to Pia. Giselle, and congratulations once again. And now to the planning champion, which recognises a non-planner for their advocacy or lasting contribution to the urban and regional environment. This category is sponsored by the Planning Institute of Australia. Let's take a look at the four nominees. Dr Cameron Murray. Daniel Gore, QC. Marcus Westbury and Fiona Goodbody. The judges have awarded two commendations and an award in this category. The first commendation goes to Fiona Goodbody from Western Australia. The second commendation goes to Marcus Westbury from Victoria. And the National Award for Planning Champion goes to Dr Cameron Murray from New South Wales. Dr Murray is one of the few public independent voices for planning. This is particularly important at present, as the value of the profession and good planning outcomes are increasingly facing economic and political pressures. As an economist, Dr Murray has tirelessly and enthusiastically championed the purpose and value of planning and his locally and internationally published papers scrutinise economic analysis. Our professions need more champions like Dr Murray, outside the planning sphere, who understand and advocate the value of good planning. Congratulations, Dr Cameron Murray. Well, thanks very much, Pia, for this acknowledgement. 2020 was a great year. I think we made a lot of progress getting to the heart of this relationship between planning and economics and what planning can do for the community. And I really hope to keep up this work in 2021 and beyond. So thanks again. Thanks, Cameron. And now to the Young Planner of the Year, which celebrates the outstanding contributions or achievements by a young planner. This category is sponsored by the Planning Institute of Australia. Let's take a look at the seven nominees from around the country. 
Skylar Sinchan, Timothy Walsh, Daniel Krause, Taylor Slattery, Andrew Holmes, Liz Webster, and Kevin Vizzuti. The judges have awarded one commendation and one award for this category. The commendation goes to Skylar Sin Chan from the Australian Capital Territory and the 2021 National Award for Young Planner of the Year goes to Daniel Kraus from Queensland. Not only has Daniel dedicated his early career to advancing social outcomes in the Solomon Islands, but he has also inspired fellow young planners to do the same through Bond University. Being able to advance such important work is the sign of a good young planner, but being able to empower others to do the same is the sign of one who is exceptional. Daniel's passion for planning is infectious, and through his passion, he has amassed a broad range of experience. The judges were left with no doubt that Daniel is the most deserving National Young Planner of the Year. Congratulations, Daniel. Uh, thank you very much for the, the recognition and um, awarding me the, the Australian Young Planner of the Year. It's um, truly humbling and um, I'm very grateful for uh, receiving that award and the, the recognition from my peers. Um, in particular, I'd like to say thank you to um, probably the, the team at Bond University as a starting point who encouraged the nomination um, at a Queensland level initially and who have been very supportive um, of me and my work in the, in the industry uh, but ever since I started at, at Bond as a student and continued working with them um, as a semester teaching fellow in the Solomon Islands Capstone Project. Um, also to uh, my current employers on Planning Group, they're very supportive um, of everything that I do and the, the work and my involvement with PIA um, as well as through Bond. Um, and of course, a very special thank you to Pia. Um, provided a, a number of opportunities for me, both um, as a student initially, and then continuing my involvement with the um, local Gold Coast branch committee um, for the past few years. Um, and it's kind of through our initial, uh, or my initial involvement with the, the local committee that I had the opportunity to um, get my first step into the industry uh, coming out of the university through, through contacts there. Congratulations and thank you, Daniel. Now for our final award of the evening, the Planner of the Year. This award is sponsored by the Planning Institute of Australia. This is awarded to a planner who provides leadership and has made a significant recent contribution to advancing the profession. And the 2021 National Award for the Planner of the Year goes to Chris De Silva from Victoria. In his 30 year career, Chris has had a positive influence on many aspects of the planning profession. Following 18 years at the city of Whittlesey, he has transitioned to the private sector and his passion for planning continually inspires those around him. His local government achievements have been recognised through 11 state awards from the Planning Institute of Australia. We now recognise the person behind these achievements, Chris De Silva, National Planner of the Year. Well, I'm thrilled to be the recipient of Planner of the Year. Um, it was a very, very much a uh, surprise to receive the, the state award or even to be nominated for that matter, but um, it has been a very humbling process. Um, I must say that in reflecting on the challenges over the last 12 months, it has been a particularly challenging period. All the uncertainty associated with COVID really did send a ripple through the industry in terms of what might eventuate, but really thanks to government and thanks to the industry more generally, the private sector has been very much in demand and that's definitely been the case for the team at MESH. So thank you for everyone's efforts and thank you once again for this um, 
a fantastic award. I really am humbled by it. Thank you, Pia, and thank you to the judges. Congratulations, Chris, on an outstanding achievement. And that brings the 2021 PR National Awards for Planning Excellence to a close. I'd like to congratulate all the winners tonight and indeed all the nominees. Your dedication and commitment to the Planning Excellence is certainly making a great difference to cities and communities across Australia. I'd also like to thank our principal sponsor, City of Adelaide, and our category sponsors once again for your support and for being part of the show tonight. Just a couple of reminders before we close. If you have received a commendation or an award tonight, peer staff will be in touch with you tomorrow to make arrangements to deliver your certificates and trophies. The award commemorative booklets are now available on the peer website to download. So if you'd like to share these with colleagues, clients and stakeholders, please do so. All the award winners tonight, please make your way to the Winners' Lounge for a group photo and interviews. There will be a link on the PIA website and also on this chat box. Thank you once again for joining me. It's been a pleasure to be your host and I do hope you continue the celebrations and enjoy the rest of the evening. Good night and see you tomorrow at the Planning Festival. The 2021 Planning Institute of Australia National Awards for Planning Excellence are proudly supported by Principal Sponsor, City of Adelaide Ahuri Haynes Charlie Holding Redlick Planned Cover Queensland Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning Urbis Victorian Planning Authority and ACOM